dancing? Is that how daddy dances? Heaven knows it is. It's really echoey in here. It's all hard surfaces. Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron, and in today's video, four things for better sound, no doubt about it, guaranteed, and guess what? It has nothing to do with gear. What? Hold on a second. This is an acoustic panel. Its job is to absorb sound. This is, it is a diffuser. It does diffuse, and its job is to scatter or break up sound. Now this one is also an acoustic panel, but it has a wood plate in front of it. So you're thinking, is its primary job function to absorb or does it also diffuse? More on that in a minute. But before we begin, a word from today's video sponsor, Worldwide Stereo. If you're not familiar with Worldwide Stereo, we've already mentioned them before in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, links are down below. Worldwide Stereo is awesome. If you are a home theater enthusiast, if you're looking for two channel audio, Worldwide Stereo has your back. They have sweepstakes that you can enter to win really killer prizes. I will leave the links down below. Make sure you check them out. If you are in Pennsylvania, they have two locations local to you, and I will leave those locations down below in the show notes. The bottom line is this, no matter what you're looking for that is hi-fi related, bookshelf speakers, floor standing speakers, AV receivers, two channel receivers, television sets, you name it, Worldwide Stereo certainly has it. Also folks, I was checking out their site earlier and under the home audio section, they have their top picks for home theater systems for 2019. Make sure you check it out. 0% financing, price match guarantee, 60 day return policy. It's a no brainer. Worldwide Stereo, thank you so much for sponsoring the video. We certainly do appreciate it and you guys know how to rock. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, you're thinking, Ron, uh, you brought out three different panels and you said there are four ways to improve your sound, guaranteed, where's the fourth thing? Stay to the end of the video because I'm gonna let you know what it is and I'm gonna tell you right now, it is the one thing that I have purchased in my own listening room that made, I think, the biggest difference and here's the kicker, it's not a panel that you put on the wall. Let's back up and I actually wanna share with you just a clip of an earlier video that I did on a Frequency Friday when we moved into this new house and I did a little video just showing off what we had to work with before we moved in and actually set up the room. If you have already seen this video, I don't wanna waste your time, so I will leave a timestamp somewhere around here that will let you know when that particular clip is over and we're back to talking about new stuff. Here's the clip, I'll be right back. So I don't know if you can hear this with my voice, but there is a lot of echo in here. Actually, let me turn on the side mic so you have a better idea. Check this out. You dancing? Is that how daddy dances? Yeah. Heaven knows it is. It's really echoey in here. It's all hard surfaces. So when we moved into the home, the very first thing based on what you just heard that I knew that I needed to tackle and wrestle down to the ground was, we got a lot of echo. Way too many hard surfaces in this room and so the first tool for that job happens to be the very first panel that I brought out which is Absorption. Absorption panels come in a lot of different varieties, different thicknesses, different sizes, but the principle pretty much remains the same for the most part. If we're talking about a traditional acoustic panel that is gonna be soaking up those frequencies that you don't necessarily want, all of that crazy reverb and echo that's going on in a lively room and you're trying to tame it, well, there's two main ingredients that I've noticed and that is gonna be rock wool as the material that is being used to soak up those frequencies or you might find some kind of a variation of acoustic fiberglass. Owens Corning is a really popular brand that you're gonna see time and time again and they make a specific fiberglass that has acoustic properties that's going to also soak up those frequencies. Either way you go, it's a smart decision to make and keep in mind that they do come in different thicknesses and the thicker that you get, well, the lower in frequency that that panel is gonna be able to absorb nasty sounding stuff. Now, another thing that I do wanna mention is it's not just the thickness of the panel that matters, it's the distance that the panel is away from the wall because guess what, when you do that, that panel is now far more effective than just slamming it up against the wall. Who would have thought? 
quick tip, and it's really easy to do. Now, with that being said, you might be thinking, uh, Ron, is there some kind of a special bracket that I need to get that panel off of the wall and get it further away from the wall? I had a really hard time finding anything like that, so I'm hoping that I might be able to rely on you guys. If you guys have found anything that gets some distance you know, from the wall to the panel, link it down below for me if you don't mind. I did notice that there is a company called Acoustic Mac, no affiliation with them at all, that they have some brackets that I think might actually work perfectly for this. I'll leave that link down below, and if you guys have any others that you wanna offer up so that helps out everybody, that would be awesome. Next thing I wanna talk about when it comes to absorption is, well, what about the location? Keep in mind that with absorption, you're really trying to tackle a number of different frequencies, but it has been my experience that with absorption, its primary function is going to be soaking up lower frequencies, bass frequencies. When you have bass peaks in that room that you need to try to even out and clean up, well, absorption is your friend, and that's what you want to actually gravitate to. Speaking of gravitating to, bass gravitates to the corners of the room. So it's my recommendation, again, based on my own experience, that that is a fantastic place to start. You either take a, a thick panel and you straddle it to the corner of the room, or you can find some panels that are actually designed to fit in the corner of the room, similar to the ones that you guys have seen in my own listening room, which are from GIK Acoustics. I think they call them their tri-traps. They're stackable, they fit snug right up into the corners of the room, and I dig them. Now, hear me, don't think that the corners of your room is the only place that you actually have a corner where bass is going to be hanging out. That is definitely not true. And this is where my room still needs a little bit of love. Anytime that you have two walls that are hanging out together and they're buttoned up with each other, guess what? Bass is gonna be hanging out there. So don't be afraid to get creative. Look up above, take a look at the ceiling, take a look at the corners and say, oh man, I need bass traps up there and I need some bass traps up there and I need some in the corners. But that's gonna lead to my next tip. It is really pretty easy to go bananas with absorption and that was a mistake that I actually made in the previous home. I had too much absorption and I think that room was just heavily damped and pretty soon you kind of have a dead, lifeless, dull sounding room. So there is this fine line of trying to balance and mix the sound of the room to where you have a balanced sounding room where bass is tame, bass has been you know, dealt with, but at the same time, you don't want so much absorption in there that you end up with this dead, lifeless, boring sounding room. So keep that in mind. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is diffusion. And you might be a little bit confused that when I brought out that diffuser, I sort of led you into thinking, it is a diffuser, but there's a disclaimer in the way that I set this up. And there is. A proper diffuser is based on mathematics, it's based on science, it is not Joe Blow trying to sell his diffusers on Amazon that has a table saw and he's just hacking up a bunch of MDF and gluing it onto a backing and selling it. Ron the Dodo Brain decides to buy a couple of them because he thinks they look cool. That's not a proper diffuser. And so I need you to understand that just because you see that kind of stuff on my channel, you might be thinking, oh, Ron knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't. And just like you, I buy something because I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty cool to give myself a little bit of grace. It does diffuse sound. And so what I wanna do is at least explain the function of a diffuser and what the end result is as you move in the direction of adding diffusion. A diffuser, takes whatever frequencies it's coming at it, it scatters it, it shoots it off into different directions of the room. And so what you end up with is a diffused, hence the name diffuser, a diffused sound. That can be a very good thing when it comes to hi-fi and I'll tell you why. If you diffuse that sound and you have enough diffusion in your room, guess what you're gonna end up with? You are gonna end up with a room that sounds way bigger than what the room actually is. Soundstage, anybody? A diffuser, my friends, is the ticket, the golden ticket to soundstage when it comes to acoustic treatment and 
based on what I have learned, please, I am not saying this with authority and I'm being humble about it. You can have too much absorption, but it seems to me that that's not always the case with diffusion. So once you have absorption in check and everything is even and everything sounds great, go bananas with diffusion. But slow down there, Bronco. Keep in mind, just like absorption, where you're trying to tackle something like bass, so you're placing it in places where bass likes to hang out. Well, diffusion is very similar in fashion that you're not tackling bass, but it does have a proper place in the listening room. And you know what? It's not in the corners and it's not where bass is hanging out. You would want to place it maybe on the sidewalls, maybe on your early reflections. That gets into a very big debate. A lot of people would say you always need to absorb the first reflections and maybe diffuse the second reflections. But the truth be told is those are places where you should and can consider diffusion and experiment with it and you never know what you're going to find out. You might thoroughly enjoy the way that it sounds in the first reflection, in the second reflection, and if you land somewhere that you really like, then it's a win-win, and who gives a rat's rear end about what anybody is saying on the forums? Just enjoy the music from that point on. Now, another thing that I wanna mention is, if you take a look at my listening room, you're going to see that I have these Uncle Bob's diffusers on the front wall. They are behind the speakers. Anybody that has ever watched my channel that knows a thing or two about acoustics and acoustic treatment, they're probably going, uh... That is probably the sound that a lot of these guys are making when they see those panels right behind my speakers on that front wall. A more appropriate place, realistically, would actually be dead center, where the center image is. Diffusing that would be a smarter move but I'm gonna tell you why I have them back there. I love open baffle speakers. I love dipole speakers. And guess what? The Anexoticas are absolutely playing frequencies that are going front, and there are playing frequencies that are going back. And so that is somewhat of a win if I have diffusion back there right behind those speakers that's gonna diffuse that back wave that is gonna be hitting that front wall, scattering it, and voila. So. Consider diffusion, it's really important and it does matter. Also, I'm gonna be leaving you some links of some legit diffusion products, some actual stuff that is not Uncle Billy Bob's that's got a hacksaw and lives in a van down by the river. Don't waste your money on the stuff that I bought. If you're in it for the sound, then I will leave some links down below that's gonna be proper diffusers that actually work. They do what they're supposed to do and it's something that you certainly should absolutely consider. And so here we are, the third thing that we're gonna be talking about, which is this guy behind me. This is the GIK Impression Series, and when I bought these, I read what GIK had to say about them, and they mentioned absorption, and they also mentioned diffusion or scattering, scattering effect. I'm not saying that these don't diffuse, I'm not making that claim. I'm saying that there are going to be better diffusers out there that will certainly do a better job than what this guy is doing. Now, I will say this, if you have two goals in mind when it comes to the impression series, number one being you do want to absorb, but you're a little bit worried about things getting too dead sounding, that is where I'm gonna say that wooden plate on the front, it actually is gonna be your friend. Because if you think about it, that's going to prevent it from absorbing as much as it otherwise would if that plate wasn't there. Second, we don't all have dedicated listening rooms and we have to take into consideration loved ones, kids, partners, wives, husbands, you name it. We have to think about what it is that we can really put up on our walls and do all of our acoustic treatment and that is where I'm gonna say this. If your goal is to end up with something that looks attractive and you understand the limitations of it, then there's nothing wrong with a panel like this. And I'm gonna say this with full confidence, this is way better than nothing. So if this is what you have to get based on your own criteria and your own aesthetics and whatever opinion is being thrown your way that's saying you've got the green light on those and nothing else, listen to me carefully. This absolutely, without a doubt, can make your room sound better. Actually, hold on a second. It will 
make your room sound better. Leaving your walls blank, doing no kind of acoustic treatment is a terrible idea. And what that leads to, based on my own experience and based on so many emails that I've gotten over the years in doing this, it leads to somebody that continues to buy more and more gear, searching for an answer to a problem that they've never even considered all has to do with the room. I hope this was helpful. I hope it encourages you to at least consider some of the different panels that are out there. And I hope that kind of wakes you up to, okay, if the manufacturer is saying this is what it does, maybe I should slow down, learn a little bit more and find out, are they getting tricky with some wording here? Or are there some other products that I might want to look into before I hit the checkout button? So that is what today's video is really inspired by is my own adventure when it comes to acoustic treatment. I think my room sounds very good. It's not perfect. There are still some issues that I need to deal with, but we're on our way. Now, here's another thing that I wanna mention, and I'm actually going to show another video that was shot when I first moved in, which is where do I put panels, first reflections? What the heck are you talking about, Ron? Let me roll the video. This is what is called the mirror trick. And the mirror trick is what allows you to figure out based on your listening position, based on where the speakers are gonna go, as long as you know those two things, you're gonna be able to find out exactly where those first reflection points are. And I should mention, if you're already lost saying, what is he even talking about first reflection? Let me explain it in the most simplistic terms that I can. Your speaker is sending you a direct signal straight to your ear. That is the signal that you ultimately want to listen to and hear the signal that is actually bouncing off of the wall, the frequencies that are bouncing off of the wall that is then arriving at your ear is a delayed signal. It is after the signal that is a direct signal. And when that happens, guess what? It doesn't sound very good. And so treating those first reflections is what you really need to do. So. Let me show off the video. This was shot earlier in a different frequency Friday. If you've already seen it, again, I'll leave a timestamp somewhere around here that will allow you to skip to the next part of the video. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help you out in the comments section down below. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the mirror along the wall until I can see the tip of that light stand. Keep it coming this way. Keep it against the wall. Hold on, hold on. Bring it down a little bit. Okay, come this way. Come this way. Okay, come this way a little more. Stop. Okay, that is the second reflection right there. So what I'm doing guys is I'm looking in the mirror to where I can see that tip of that light stand. So I know I'm gonna have a reflection point right there, which is the second one, which tells me guys that the first reflection point is gonna be before that, I guarantee it. That is how you do first reflection points with the toddler. And typically it leads to drinking afterwards, so. All right, so I wanted to show you guys, I taped the mirror on the wall, but this gives you an idea of what you wanna see. So from the listening position, you can see there is your first reflection point. And with George's help earlier, we figured that the second reflection point is just right after. So, and there we go. All right, folks, we made it to the end. Acoustic treatment 101, four thing. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not getting out of here yet. What the heck is the fourth thing? We've made it this far. You've crossed the finish line. And now I'm gonna tell you, this does not apply to every single person or every single room out there. Here in Arizona, guess what? We have a lot of tile, tons of tile. Almost every home that you walk into is tile. You wanna know what doesn't like music and great sounding hi-fi? Tile. <laughs> it sounds awful. The biggest factor, if we're talking about it from a subjective point of view, what I heard, the immediate results, the biggest thing that made a difference in my room was a rug. That's right, as simple as that is, I went out and I bought the biggest freaking thickest shag rug that I can afford 
and it certainly wasn't expensive. I think I paid 400 bucks for it. Anyhow, the rug in there is giant. And when I laid that baby down, I was blown away by what just a rug did. And it got me thinking about something. We're not thinking about down below and we're not thinking about what's up above us and we should. So as we venture off into considering our acoustic treatment, take a look above you, take a look below you. Do you have tile? Get a rug. That would be priority number one. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to get roasted for it. I would do that before I even do my first reflections. I really would. You have a bigger surface area on the ground and getting that taken care of, I think that will absolutely make a bigger difference than throwing up a couple of panels and saying, all right, maybe I don't need a rug. Hogwash. Get a rug if you have tile. And I'll take it a step further. I laid down that rug and then I got to thinking, huh, maybe I should put down a rug pad underneath the rug. And so again, guess what? I got the thickest, biggest rug pad that I could find and I put that underneath the rug. And again, I saw immediate improvement in the room. And then I got to thinking, maybe I should get another one. And so I did experiment with this stuff, explore it. And if you have the ability to do it, I can promise you this, I can promise you this, it will be far more of an improvement in what you're hearing than any other upgrade that you could ever do. I don't care what preamp we're talking about. I don't care what power amp. I don't care what speakers we're talking about. If you actually treat your room and you fix your room, you are off to the races. So folks, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for stopping by with today's video. I have enjoyed my time with you. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit the bell notification, subscribe. You guys know the drill. And I wanna mention, Patreon links are down below. I don't love bringing up Patreon, but every dollar helps. And it's getting us closer and closer to being able to do this full time. We see it, it's there, almost within our reach. So please consider it. I thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate every single one of you. If I made a mistake in this video and I need to be corrected, I have thick skin, feel free. Comments down below. And uh, yeah, I think we're done here. Let's go listen to some music. What? I said, I, I didn't say you were bad. I just said, you might not diffuse. Try harder at diffusing then. Gosh.